Good morning, everybody. This is Rena. We're here at eleven eleven Revelation Channel, and I just feel led and directed by the Holy Spirit to bring you today a couple of messages through Psalms that um, I was given a warning, um, and I believe I'm not going to try to lean upon my own understanding. I think I'm just going to lean on Papa, Father in Heaven, and Jesus, because a lot of these things I just don't understand, and I have to like be truthful to with you all about all of this, and it takes, uh, it takes a bit to be able to get on here and to just go on blind faith, which is what I have, and I believe in 100% in my heart, each of us, each and every single one of us that believes in Jesus and loves him and cares deeply and just is really, really grounded in him for uh, entrusting him with your life and everything about yourself. Um, and people that are newly walking also in the Lord, Jesus loves you. He wants to find a way to use you. And every single person is important to him. So I'm going to read and these three Psalms, I was given a warning where I woke up early in the morning. Um, I am going to read like a fourth uh, psalm, but these are rel relatively short, but I wanted, I wanted to bring this again to the um, channel because I just feel like it's coming, it's relevant now, and um, I just pray that it is. I, I don't want to be off in this, but I do have that feeling. It's very strong very strong feeling about it. So I woke up in the morning and um, it's just like, you know how when you first get up, you know how you move and nothing would, nothing happened except four to six was repeated to me three times. And so as, as I was being told four to six, gently, like a gentle whisper, I repeated it four to six and they repeated it back to me, 426. And I said, 426. And then they said, 426, a third time. So I, at that time, hadn't even been looking much into the Strong's Concordance Bible, which is the technical way to translate from the Hebrew and the Greek into the English. And it gives you just a lot of definition, a lot more definition on just reading out of the King James. If you get a particular word, you can click on that word. It has a number. I mean, it's like really high the number. I have the actual Strong's Concordance Bible, the book, and it's something like 19,000. Just let me check really fast because I've got it right here. And I do want to just tell you so you kind of understand, but these are great to have. Um, then that way, if there's something and the computers aren't working or something, you've got it. So uh, here in the Greek, I mean, it goes up to like 6,000 numbers. And when you've got the Hebrew, it goes up to like 22,000. I mean, it's, it's high. There's just so many numbers that are assigned to each word. And sometimes you'll click on the same word and it'll be a totally different meaning. So... That's just, I don't know Hebrew that well, even though my name is 100% Hebrew and it means joyous melody. I didn't even know that until a couple years ago. So I just didn't know. I didn't know. And I was so excited when I found this out. I was like, how amazing is my God, my Lord Jesus. Uh, just little teeny clues that I was just so once rebellious and completely... I mean, off on my own thing, didn't think I needed nobody, and my testimony is crazy. Everybody, we all have crazy testimonies. We're all broken. We are all dreadful sinners, and um, it's just a fact, okay? Whatever you think you're wearing, that is but filthy rags, okay? And that's why it says, 
Do not worry about what you will eat each day. Don't worry about what you will put on or wear. Women, cover your heads. And the reason, and women don't understand this, the reason why Peter told women to cover their heads was because of the Genesis 6 incursion. And the Genesis 6 thing is about the, the fallen angels that came down and they um, procreated with the daughters of men. And it was before the flood and after the flood. And the hair was what was uh, something that drew these fallen angels to um, women. Now, my daughter, just because I want you to know how real this really is, and I have it right here. My daughter was about eight. She's 13 now. And we woke up one day. She was sleeping with me in the bed. And we woke up one day. And this hair had been cut, lasered off. At first, I thought it was radiation. I'm not going to lie. You guys cannot even imagine how much hair was. It was like lasered. This much was still hanging from her head. I have pictures. I'm able to talk about this now. I had no idea what was going on. All I knew is that I was dealing with one heck of a spiritual uh, warfare going on. Um, I was praying against all of the spraying that they do in the skies. And I was getting such results amazing results from praying against the demons that are up in the skies spraying chemicals out everywhere so just know that your prayers are heard and they do work but what happened was some illegal spiritual uh activity happened and my daughter being eight years old can you even imagine she was not even afraid she was barely even like phased. I was the one that was angry. I'm talking angry. Okay, so she was, it was nine. I believe she was just turned nine when this happened. Let me show you two years later what was delivered to her on her birthday on the hood of our car, the trunk of the car, excuse me, as we walked outside and we went outside. Uh, it was like uh, zero degrees out zero degrees and ice chips were coming down and so I jumped in the car turned the ignition on my automatic is to go ahead and look in the rearview mirror I always do that it's instinctual my daughter was throwing something away and um I see a man in my rearview mirror and so I jumped out of the car and I've been living here for six years and so for six years for me that's a long time so I know all the neighbors around and what I did was I went around uh, the next day and I was just asking everybody, did you put these on the trunk? Did you put these on the trunk? Because we, we stay to ourselves. I'll help the neighbors. I love the neighbors, but we kind of keep it to ourselves. Nobody knew even that it was her birthday. It was just her and I. And this man said to her, you have some wings on your trunk. And when she went to look, she looked and then she looked back and he was just gone. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's been, we're all being trained the last seven years. Um, a lot of us have just come in since 2020. Anybody out there that's just new and you don't know Jesus on a personal level, level, you may go to church like every week and then live like the devil during the week. A lot of people do that. They're lukewarm. Um, but they do have, there is, God wants you. He wants your heart. He wants you to just consider and also give yourself fully to him 100%. And that means to give him your temple, your body, and let him have it and let him and yield to the Holy Spirit. And you become less and let him become more. Let yourself become lowly and humble. And even there's different, I, I never really thought about it before, but there's different um, factions of pride. Um, and even I went through something, I think, a little bit when I got really turned off by the churches, uh, especially after 2020 and the way things were going. And we just have to shake them awake, everyone. That's what it comes down to, okay? Because I know that, I believe that there's 
a lot of good people and they just haven't been being told the truth fully by their pastors. Okay, so to whom much is given, much is required. That is another statement out of the Bible. So we also need to realize that. And I was being very skeptical about every single church and I didn't even want to go anymore. And so I found myself recently, I made my way back to my old church, at least to visit for a luncheon. Um, and then I also go to another church now that I have started to attend. Um, the 501c3 churches are definitely different. They're on like kind of, they have different a different outlook about things. Um, and there are certain things that they just don't talk about. They don't talk about the rapture. They really don't talk about prophecy. Um, a lot of them don't. Some of them do, but most of them don't. Um, so... I was just going to give you that little quick, uh, <sighs> there's so much to the testimony and it's like me, I am the most rebellious. I'm going to be 55 on March 30th. So <clears throat> I was the most rebellious. I was completely lost, um, until I was 48. And um, I was just tired for 10 years out of that from like 38 to 48. I remember like just being crunched up in a ball, in a fetal position, crying my eyes out every single night, um, yet not getting anywhere from not any breakthrough. Um, it wasn't until 2016 and I just completely 100% decided and plus spiritual things were happening and um, there was a lot of um, warfare that was starting to happen and um, that's where breakthrough that's when breakthrough comes okay um, unfortunately when you're gonna see because of your faith being increased when you get into the Word of God you are going to start to notice things you're gonna start seeing things and it's like everybody has different gifts um, that they've been given and you may be praying for some of these gifts and God is going to give them to you because that's just God. He loves you. He wants to, he wants to see you grow and prosper as his child, right? And so you don't have any idea. I think you all must long just as much as I do to have Jesus's hands wrapped around your cheeks like this. I think about it and um, I don't know but I'm gonna read these Psalms to y'all because I love y'all and uh, I just I hope that that gives you a little bit of encouragement I am NOT always so great at just coming on and just shooting different ideas and having a one-sided conversation with myself I love to talk about God. I could talk about Jesus and the Holy Spirit and the Father in Heaven 24-7. That's all I want to talk about. But when it comes to these devices, um, they like actually give me social... It's like a social anxiety feeling like that I get when I'm around people that I kind of don't know. You know how when you go in the church and you feel like a little bit uncomfortable, but then like you start warming up and people are warming up to you and then you get a little bit more comfortable and you feel better. And um, not like a bar where you go and it's like people you have no idea who they are and they're just getting completely drunk and you don't know these people yet you trust them, drinking with them. And who knows what's going to happen. That's not a feeling at all of any kind of comfort. Okay, so, but those were the two different, like, completely opposites, right? So, I encourage you, um, if you don't know Jesus, like I was just talking about, um, your search, he is here. He's with you. He's with you all the time. He's been with you since you were born in here, into the earth. And he's been waiting for you all this time. So if you could just, just acknowledge that you're a sinner like the rest of us. We're all sinners. We all got into trouble. That's why we're here. And you admit you're a sinner in need of a savior, which is him. And he is the only way, truth, and life. B is believe on the blood that was shed upon the cross. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. He died, shed his blood 
in for all sins of mankind and um, past, present, and future, you know? Um, there's things that people do that they don't mean to do, and it's like knowingly or unknowingly, you know? Just pray each day that you just do not sin and pray to God for the strength to not sin. Um, I believe that works. Um, you know, I have my own struggles. We all do. And there is, this world is so crazy. Okay. I'm sure. Okay. People have issues with it because it's getting harder and harder. It's not any easier. Right. But I'm going to get to reading these, this now because it's important. Okay. And I need you to understand the importance. I'm not sure exactly I know I have an idea on who it's for, but this is going to go where it needs to go, Lord. I pray that you send it out to who needs to see it in your good will and pleasure, Father in heaven. Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I pray, Lord, you do not let me be deceived by the enemy in any way, shape, or form. And I rebuke the enemy out of, if there's any enemy in this region, in this territory, in the airspace, or the atmosphere, I rebuke it. Jesus Christ said, get behind him, Satan. And I ask you, Father God, to saturate the atmosphere with your glory and your son's Jesus glory and the Holy Spirit's glory because your glory is just and it is good. Amen. Okay. First Psalm, Psalm 50. <clears throat> The mighty God, even the Lord, hath spoken and called the earth from the rising of the sun unto the going down thereof. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God hath shined. Our God shall come and shall not keep silence. A fire shall devour before him, and it shall be very tempestuous around about him. He shall call to the heavens from above. And to the earth that he may judge his people. Gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. And the heavens shall declare his righteousness, for God is judge himself. Salah. Hear, O my people, and I will speak, O Israel, and I will testify against thee. I am God, even thy God. I will not reprove thee for thy sacrifices or thy the burnt offerings to have been continually before me. I will take no bullock out of thy house, nor he goats out of thy folds. For every beast of the forest is mine and the cattle upon a thousand hills. I know all the fowls of the mountains and the wild beasts of the fields are mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell thee, for the world is mine, and the fullness thereof. Will I eat the flesh of bulls, or drink the blood of goats? Offer unto God thanksgiving, and pray thy vows unto the Most High, and call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify me. But unto the wicked God saith, What hast thou to do? to declare my statutes, or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth, seeing thou hatest instruction, and casteth my words behind thee. When thou sawest a thief, then thou contendest with him, and hast been partaker with adulterers. Thou givest thy mouth to evil, and thy tongue frameth deceit. Thou sittest and speakest against thy brother. Thou slanderest thine own mother's son. These things hast thou done. And I kept silence. Thou thoughtest that I was altogether such one as thyself. But I will reprove thee and set them in order before thine eyes. 
Now consider this, ye that forget God, lest I tear you in pieces, and there be none to deliver. Whoso offereth praise glorifieth me, and to him that ordereth his conversation, aright will I show the salvation of God. Amen. Okay? And the last thing I wanted to say about it was that the 426, when I looked it up in the Strong's Concordance, it is a judicial judgment. It is a huge, it's a worldwide judgment. So that is what is coming, and it is coming quickly. It is coming in the month of March. This month. And I'm pretty sure it's this year. I don't believe it will be next year. It's this year. Okay, so this is when I first got this word, you guys. It was November 12th, 2021. Okay, so I'm going back. I'm going back. I'm repeating this to tell you about this because I believe that this was, uh, like it says in Corinthians 13, we prophesy in part. We don't understand all of it. Of course we don't. It's a mystery. And so God does give us part of it, but we don't understand all of it. There's just no way. So uh, it just doesn't happen like that. Um, so the second one is Psalm 48. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised in the city of our God, in the mountain of his holiness, beautiful for situation, the joy of the whole earth, is Mount Zion, on the sides of the north, the city of the great king. God is known in her palaces for a refuge, for lo, the kings were assembled, they paused by together. Okay, they saw it, and so they marveled. They were troubled and hasted away. Wow, I'm just like, I took some notes here. And it's talking about five Arab nations upset and attack. And then Palestine removed. Why did I write this? This is from way back when, in 20, uh, the 21st of... Uh, November 12th, excuse me, 2021. Um, okay, Palestine was removed, though, back in 1948. That is true. Okay, so let me get back to the verse. The verse is this. They saw it, and so they marveled. They were troubled and hasted away. Fear took hold upon them there, and pain as of a woman in travail. Thou breakest the ships of Tarish, with an east wind, as we have heard, so we have seen in the city of the Lord of hosts, in the city of our God, God will establish it forever. Selah. We have thought of thy loving kindness, O God, in the midst of thy temple. According to thy name, O God, so is thy praise unto the ends of the earth. Thy right hand is full of righteousness. And see, the Lord talks about it all through the Bible, the right side, your right side, your right side of everything, your right foot, your right hand, your right eye, your right ear, anoint those things, the right ear up here, you can anoint your right eye, I, I, I anoint everything though, and that's just me, that's how I am, so, but didn't mean to interrupt once again. Okay, let Mount Zion rejoice. Let the daughters of Judah be glad because of thy judgments. Walk about Zion and go round about her. Tell the towers thereof. Mark ye well her, bulwark, her bulwarks. Consider her palaces that ye may tell it to the generation following. For, uh, for this God is our God forever and ever. He will be our guide even unto death. Here's the last one. This is what he told me to read. Number one was Psalm 50. Number two was Psalm 48. And number three was Psalm 49. I hear this, all ye people, give ear, all ye inhabitants of the world, both low and high, rich and poor together. My mouth shall speak of wisdom and 
The meditation of my heart shall be of understanding. I will incline mine ear to a parable. I will open my dark saying upon a harp. Wherefore should I fear in the days of evil, when the iniquity of my heels shall compass me about? They that trust in their wealth and boast themselves in the multitude of their riches, none of them can, can by any means redeem his brother, nor give to God a ransom for him. For the redemption of their soul is precious, and it ce ceaseth forever, that he should still live forever and not see corruption. For he seeth that wise men die, likewise the fool and the brutish person perish, and leave their wealth to others. Their inward thought is that their houses shall continue forever and their dwelling places to all generations. They call their lands after their own names. That cracks me up too. Uh, nevertheless, man being in honor abideth not. He is like the beasts that perish. This their way is their folly. Yet their posterity approve their sayings. Salah. Like sheep they are laid in the grave. Death shall feed on them, and the upright shall have dominion over them in the morning. And their beauty shall consume in the grave from their dwelling. But God will redeem my soul from the power of the grave, for he shall receive me, Salah. Be not thou afraid when one is made rich, when the glory of his house is increased. For when he dieth, he shall carry nothing away, his glory shall not descend after him. Though while he lived, he blessed his soul. And men will praise thee when thou doest well to thyself. He shall go to the generation of his fathers. They shall never see light. Man that is in honor and understandeth not is like the beasts that perish. Okay. This is the last one that I'm going to read, and then um, I'm going to say goodbye. You guys, I love you. I got to go to work. I got called in to go to work for a couple hours this evening. So this is it right here, okay? Psalm 20. I wrote, I love you, Jesus, right at the top. The Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob, defend thee. Send thee help from the sanctuary and strengthen thee out of Zion. Remember all thy offerings and accept thy burnt sacrifice, Salah. Grant thee according to thine own heart and fulfill all thy counsel. We will rejoice in thy salvation in the name of our God. We will set up our banners. The Lord fulfill all thy petitions. No, now, now know that I, that I the Lord, saveth his anointed. He will hear him from his holy heaven with the saying strength of his right hand. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God, Jesus. They are brought down and fallen, but we are risen and stand upright. Save, Lord, let the king hear us when we call. Amen. I love you all in Christ so much. Please leave your prayers down in the comments and I will be chatting with you and praying with you. Love you guys so much. And I love you, Lord, Father, God in heaven, Jesus and Holy Spirit. You are just and true. And we are praying for all to come to you. We are praying for all men and all women to come to you, Jesus. This is the most critical time right now. And I feel it. I can feel it in my bones. I can feel it in my entire being. And it is so hard. It tears us all up inside. We feel the pain from the horrible loss of so many people. And if they don't come to you soon, I just fear for that for them. Because there is a long battle ahead. If you want to stick around and see it here on the earth, I suggest not. I suggest you would just call upon his name and confess Jesus out loud to people now. And then 
get a baptism if you can at home. You don't have to like do it in a church. You can do it at home. And then just tell the Father that you are sacrificing your body um, to be a living sacrifice for him now. And um, one other little example I can give you, one second, <clears throat> is this. He says that we are his living stones of fire. So, I had him take my old heart of stone, this little heart of stone. I now have a heart of flesh. This is my other, like, really cool rock that I love so much. And I love rocks. Are you on the rock? Is your rock Jesus Christ? He's the only rock. You better get on board. Get on the ark now and stay on the ark. <clears throat> stay in prayer. Don't let anybody stop you. And just prayer. Pray without ceasing is what I meant to say. Praying without ceasing. All right. I love y'all. Have a great rest of your day.